Listen, I know everyone is really excited for the upcoming Asus 4K 240Hz glossy Quantum Dot OLED monitor coming early next year, hopefully. Me included, as on paper, it does everything except for turn into a flashlight. But there's one major flaw with this monitor, because of course there is, that has many wondering if dropping $1,500 or more. I mean, God, who knows? This thing could be like $2,000. We don't have a confirmed price yet on this quote unquote end game display spoiler it's not could be a mistake which will quickly be superseded by much better monitors now before you get your hate bone on let me explain so upon first inspection this monitor is everything we've been asking for made even better by the glossy finish which will lead to excellent contrast, vibrancy, and clarity. I mean, guys, this will truly be, without a shadow of a doubt, the best gaming monitor on the market, period. But when you look closely, you'll see it definitely isn't perfect. And the biggest red flag to me is the brightness. Now, it's no secret that OLED has a major issue with brightness as well as auto-dimming annoyances and this is no exception. I mean, according to the information online, apparently this is gonna have around 250 nits full screen and 1,000 nits for the peak brightness. I believe in like a 2% window or something like that. And honestly, that doesn't sound too bad. I mean, 1,000 nits is pretty dang bright and 250 nits full screen, while not as bright as mini LED or even many other LCD alternatives on the market today, it is bright enough to not be, you know, feeling super dim. So what's the big problem here? Well, the big problem is in the 10% window. I don't know if you guys saw this, but apparently it's only going to be 400 nits. Now, to put that into perspective, that's not good if we compare it to something like the Samsung S95C, which is based on the nearly exact same technology as they'll be using a very similar panel tech. Well, the S95C in a 1% or 2% window can actually be tuned to hit around 2000 nits of brightness, which of course is double that of what we're gonna be expecting out of this monitor. But in the 10% window, this is far, far more important. We're talking about nearly 1400 nits on the S95C versus around 400, hopefully, on the monitor. Now, that's over three times the brightness, and I still feel like the S95C at times is a little too dim in HDR gaming. Now, in some scenes, it looks absolutely excellent and very bright, but in others where maybe there's a lot of bright things on the screen, it starts to seem like it's just not popping out as much as you would want it to if it were a quote unquote perfect display. So clearly there are gonna be some issues with brightness on this display. Now in the 100% window, which in my opinion is the most important, it is very close to the S95C 250 nits versus the roughly 280 nits you might expect to see out of the S95C, so that's good there. But if you're thinking that this is going to be the perfect display, that's likely not gonna be the case. There is gonna be definitely some room for improvement. And speaking of room for improvement, we do have news about FOLED display tech allegedly potentially going into production already. Now, if you don't know, FOLED is gonna be an upgrade over current OLED technology, which let's cut to the chase, essentially will lead to up to four times the efficiency in theory, we'll see whether or not that actually happens, over our current OLED technology, which of course means we could be looking at far less risk of burn-in, maybe less aggressive ABL, as well as far brighter displays. And if that could be coming as early as late 2024 or early 2025, if we're lucky, well then that's not too long to wait for what could be a far better display technology. So the question is, Will it be a mistake to drop potentially thousands of dollars on a display that is definitely not going to be perfect and could be superseded within a year? And honestly, guys, I'm going to say it depends. As a display enthusiast, I'm going to buy it regardless, and I'm going to really, really like the display. And I think many people who are looking for a very fast and very clear display are going to be very happy with this display regardless. But if you are a person who's already 
pretty happy with your display as it is and you're willing to wait, it might be worth the wait, but again, we don't know for sure when FOLED tech is going to be coming to monitors. So for that reason, I'm going to say, while it could maybe be a mistake, I can't in good faith tell you to wait for technology that we don't know for sure when it's going to happen. So if you're scared about it being obsoleted, unfortunately, that's just the name of the game when it comes to PC tech. And it's something you're going to have to potentially live with if you're looking to buy new technology. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.